guys, I could not do anything on the break, but just, I promise you guys, my spirit, I feel like I've just be reignited in my own purpose, in my own mindset with my brother here. Ernest Moss is just more than a mentor. He is a typical movement himself. This is my <laughs> semester through six global movement is to our team that said all of us are going to have movements because we all are a whole package deal but he's fueled by big energy as you've experienced today he empowers individuals to unlock their unique formula for success across every facet of their life and i know you heard it and he talked business he talked mindset he talked he talked parenting he talked everything and that's what he does every day are you ready to let him tell you how he went from prison, which he introduced in our last segment, to what I would say the palace of his full-blown purpose and who he is today with WTF? Bro, tell us, how did you go from that to that? What kind of mindset did you even have? <laughs> hey, you know, I've captured some of this in my uh, first book, Corporate Convict. Let me show oh, you God. all my book real quick. I know they're going to yes. have it, but, but yes. look at this cover. You got the colors, the, the red, the black, black, the green. Yes. So it tells a lot of their stories, but when I was in prison, they asked me, they said, so where do you see yourself in five years? You know, people always, you know, say that. They ask that question, where do you see yourself in five years? And I told them, I said, hmm, I see myself walking into my office telling my administrative assistant to hold all calls as I sit in front of my big desk and take my suit jacket off. And I see myself at six figures. Now, at the time, I'm, on, I'm in prison. I have a GED. Mm. And, and let's just put some real perspective around this. This is in 2007. So, you know, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and I told them this and everybody laughed at me. My friends that were in there, the staff, all of the people laughed at me and were like, man, you got to be crazy. So when I came home in June, I started college in September with a GED. I wasn't raised with uh, technology and you got to remember all of those years we didn't have computers and smartphones when I went to prison we were still remembering numbers off a page <laughs> y'all y'all yes. yes don't know about that they don't but, uh, <laughs> I do because I came from a third world country <laughs> right so um, as, as I'm getting out of prison I'm Focus. I'm focused. I'm focused. I said, so I went through college. I said, I'm going to get an associate's degree in, in technology because they do hire fellows. And I said, oh, okay, I'll do this. I'm good at math. So I did it. I got straight A's for the first two years. And I thought, now, if I can get straight A's from a GED that I got in 1992 and I can get straight A's, then I should keep going and get my bachelor's degree. Kept going, got my bachelor's degree. As I'm taking my bachelor's degree, I'm at the school and to make a long story short, a corporation is there doing mock interviews and they tell me, hey, Ernest, why don't you do a mock interview? I said, I'm just in a student <laughs> uniform. I'm, I'm, I did it and they liked me and they called me back and they loved my confidence. And what I would tell everyone, and here's something you all should write down, especially my young people, always, in interviews with no matter what they need you're willing to learn even if you don't know it right now you're a student by nature and you're willing to put in the work to learn whatever's needed for this role and when i told them that they hired me and i was making 17 dollars and 36 cents Ooh, i thought i was rich <laughs> i'm making 17 dollars an hour what Man, oh, are you yes. kidding me? Yes. I'm working all the overtime they got. I'm first to come, last to leave. You want a weekend, Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, every what? On the holidays, they pay you three times pay. Are you kidding me? I, I almost lived at this corporation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. 
But you know what I had to do? I had to change my circle. I had I used to have real long hair because y'all, you know, I used to hold my braids like this. You know, I was, you know, busy bone from thugs and harmony. You know, I was that guy. Yeah, I cut my hair. I shaved my face. I, I bought different clothes. I started talking differently. Uh, I started hanging out with different people. And I said, you know what? I have to fit into this corporate world. So again, the book Corporate Convict explains all of this. And then as I, I remember, my goal was to be that six figure. Y'all know how we normally say it in the hood. Don't act like you know what rhymes with figure, but I'm gonna leave that right there. I said, I'm gonna be that six figure person <laughs> for the PG folks. I'm gonna be that, and I hit that goal in less than five years. I was still on parole mm. when I hit six figures. Wow. And everybody wow. around me thought I was crazy. Like how in the world are you doing this? Wow. And now I'm trying to sell it to my partners from the hood. Like, bro, you can get your life together. You can do this. You can do that. And none of them follow my lead. I'm, I'm going to take that back. There was two or three. And they're still my homeboys right now. But most of them wouldn't listen to me. And one guy, here's, here's the funny thing. This is how much racism is in what we say. One of the brothers said, oh, man, they just gave you a job because you like skiing. Oh, of course. Yeah, the devaluation. That's that's the true definition <laughs> of what a hater would do. But we will talk and about that later. I ain't talked to him in a long time since then. <laughs> but as I'm doing this corporate thing and I'm making so much money, I got fat. But I mean, this, this E right here, like this is 80 pounds less than what I was when I was in corporate America. And, I, and we'll put up a couple of those pictures on yes. the YouTube page so you can yes. see the yes. before and after. Yes. But I was a big guy. And it was because I was eating so good. You gotta remember, I grew up poor. Man, I'm making all this money and what? I'm eating and just rolled up. Right. And, but again, this was corporate America and I still didn't feel fulfilled, you all, because I wasn't helping enough people. Yeah, I was making a lot of money and it goes back to the money. I know a lot of everybody wants more money, including me. Like, yeah, it, 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 there's no price tag to put on my value. So, yeah, I, I want my bag, but I don't chase money because when you do money, start running. So I ain't chasing it. It's chasing me. So, you know, if you focus on the impact and saving people's lives and, and bringing about a difference in people's lives, the bag is going to follow you. You are. It's going to chase you down and and dump on you more than you could ever even dream of. But if you selfishly doing everything for the bad, then you might even get it. And then you're gonna be a miserable, lonely person when you get that bag. And I've met a few of these men and women right now that are millionaires, millionaires. Mm. That, are, that are bankrupt within their souls. They're, they're lonely. That, that's why you see a lot of these millionaires committing suicide. Cause yeah, they got the numbers in the bank account, but their soul is bankrupt. Don't sell your soul for the bag, you all. Uh, but anyway, let's not, I, I know I'm jumping off topic. <laughs> I got to get to where um, I took my last stance in corporate America. And I joined the movement uh, with other brothers and sisters because I wanted to bring about impact. I lost my mother uh, two years ago. And um, mm. it hurt because that was my first love. That was my sweetheart, and I was the oldest. And um, she she asked me to let her go. It was because of cancer. And I told her, no, I ain't letting you go. She said, the only way I can do this is if you tell me it's okay. Oh, wow. To go. And I said, I don't, she said, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to hurt. She said, you got to tell me it's okay. And I cried like a baby. I cried hard. And I told her it was okay, and she went on hospice, and she lasts for a couple of months, and she passed. My entire family basically disowned me for that because they feel like I gave my mom the green light to kill herself. And she didn't kill herself, the cancer did, but you know what I mean, they, that's how they look at it. That's how people that are very immature, that don't know their emotional intelligence, they see it. But I didn't want my mom to be sick. She had been through cancer once, and it came back. And she said, she said she didn't want to suffer anymore. And I said, okay, mama, it's okay. And from that moment, I went into depression. 
I, I went into alcoholism, um, uh, smoking weed and smoking black and miles and cigarettes and uh, drinking every night. I couldn't go to sleep without a drink and 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 some smoking. And some of you all out there are going through this right now. Your your emotions are so messed up that you literally can't live in your own skin without different chemicals coming into this body that's built on chemicals in order to just exist within your own skin. And I went through that for a few months and I lost a lot of people around me uh, because of that. I wasn't the nice person that you see right now smiling. I was very, I don't know how to even put it in words. I was just off. I wasn't being myself. I was questioning my God. Uh, it, it, it's so much that went through my mind during that time because here it is, I had been in prison all those years and I wanted to make my mama proud. Yes, and now she was gone. And yeah. she told me, she said, boy, I, you, I'm more proud of you than anybody. She said, you don't have to do anything else for me to be proud of you. I'm already proud of you. Because here's a quick part of that story is that with my mom and my aunt, which they come as a pair, that's a whole nother story, but <laughs> I moved them into one of my rental properties. This rental property had an in-ground pool that overlooked the lake. And I'm not saying it was a mansion or anything like that. But it was beautiful. But to my mama, this was her mansion. Because at the time, my mom was living in the project still. While I'm six figures, she in the project, and I gotta fight her to get out of the project because she comfortable with her. This is her whole life. She been in the project, the trailer park, like, this is normal. She's like, you trying to take me away from my surroundings. And I put her in this house, and she, she was able to bring her grandbabies there. And they had a pool with a sliding board. She had a lake she woke up to every day. And this is the house that she passed in. And she said, my son gave me my mansion. And I'm happy and I can go. She was so, My that, goodness. Yeah. yeah. That changed I everything. It. I'm getting emotional myself. <laughs> I know. It's just, it's, 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 I know that the audience is listening and if you're feeling the vibration to see uh, a young man because i feel you're still very young have such a wonderful bond with his mother i i have to tell you i know this might be a little bit different but this is a mindset thing too that when a man has developed that healthy bond and love and respect for his mother I bet one day I get to meet your queen that you married, ah, yes, the second yes. queen. She will attest that, to life, that she life. has been able to benefit highly as treated well as a woman in a relationship with a man romantically. And guys, I hope that you are listening to that and that makes sense to you as he spent this time. And we give honor and, and just gratitude to um, Ernest's mom for what she brought, the light she brought in his life. When you came home, your focus was to really build that and you felt cut short. You got stuck, right? Yeah. That's how people get stuck. You just described the whole series that many of us go through that that thing will come out of nowhere or it will just be impending, which seems like doom. How did you get yourself from those being stuck in those emotions, you give us the so shout out to my queen, so uh, to my queen B Chrissy. Uh, like uh, uh, she like, definitely pushed uh, me forward. She, she saw more in me than I even thought. And I used to think I was the, I used to think I was the a bad boy until my wife was like, uh, "You even better than that." And I'm like, "You really feel that way?" Like, <laughs> she's like, "Yes, what is wrong with you? You are you are amazing." And I'm like. Hey, I, I like the way you talking. All <laughs> oh, right, that resonates with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, so um, she was, she was, she was there. And she was supportive. She was actually the last one uh, because she's a uh, retired RN. She was the last one that saw my mom alive. My mom didn't mm -hmm. want anyone to see her pass, um, wow. and she was there and she took care of my mom. So again, shout out to the queen. Um, and she even dealt with my mess for those few months where I hit my low again after my mom. And then 
See, people don't understand. I mean, I'm telling you all these sweet things about my mom. My mama was rough, boy. <laughs> like that little I know lady. you told me some Man. stuff about that. <laughs> oh, look at her. My mama was rough, and she didn't play that like you. She'll cuss you out in a heartbeat, but like it'd be just as sweet to everybody else, the grandbabies. But me, oh, I get the blues, you know. And I kept hearing my mom in the back of my mind to my boy, if you don't get your stuff together, if you don't get your butt up and get your watch and, and, and I'm like, man, and here's the thing, you all my mom never did drugs, never did alcohol. All she did was she did gambling at the casino <laughs> and smoked cigarettes, but she never did any of the hardcore street stuff. That wasn't her. All her sons did, but you know, and um, I'm sitting right here thinking, like, man, how in the world can I help people if I'm I have all these vices and I'm giving these vices power over me. So again, it goes back to my belief in God. Yeah. Now in the back of my mind, it's like, do you really believe in your God or do you believe in the pain more? Yeah. Which one is more impactful on your life? Is he bigger than this or is the pain bigger than him? Well, do you really believe in the power of your God? And I said, I do believe in the power of my God. And here's the thing, you all, once you believe, and that's one of our first formulas that I didn't even talk to is BS. Come on, sis, come on. Again, I ain't cussing at you. <laughs> it's your belief system. Systems, yeah. If you don't believe in yourself, then you don't believe in God. I'm sorry, I'll say it. Period. If you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in God. Because the two are interchangeable. They're the same. Like they're, they're, they're intertwined. The more you believe in you, the more you believe in God. Absolutely. The more you believe in God, the more you should believe in you. Come on. So if one of them not working, then the other one ain't working neither. And you wonder why you're not getting those blessings. So these doors started opening up in front of me and I always have had a heart to give back because I was the big brother. I was the big homie in the hood. I was always that guy that was giving back to the young people. And I remember being that 18 year old teenager with all of my role models were drug addicts. So I was the role model. I didn't have anybody to look up to. I didn't have anyone to teach me this thing called adulting, which you will find the QR code in this video. And, and we'll have the links also where there's a free book that I wrote called WTF what's the formula and it's about adulting and you can teach teenagers and, and adults because the parents need to learn how to do this thing called adulting and high school is not teaching them how to adult on the level that they need so i wanted to create what's the formula to adulting because i didn't i thought i knew but i didn't know because when i came out of prison i had to learn how to get my ids and passports and uh uh uh, health insurance and taxes and I didn't know nobody taught me that yeah. so the, within the program we have all these different things to teach them a belief system in themselves it's not we're not teaching religion at all I don't even follow a, a, a religion because that's man made stuff but yes. and if you do then good for you i'm not yeah. knocking you at all i don't knock religions at all and i'll go to the mosque the temple the church my brother is a black hebrew israelite i go up there and worship with him too i'll worship with anybody i don't assign any religion to myself mm. other than i simply believe in god that's right. And just like that simple phrase when they said, uh, so what's your name when Moses was talking to the burning bush? He said, I am that I am. That I am. That's all you need to know. Exactly. <laughs> that is all is you I need am. to know. Yes. That I am. <laughs> yes. So that's what made me create this uh, program because I wanted to make sure no teenagers had to go through the prison route like I did. They had to go through all, take all the L's as they call them. Right. And and, and go through that. I, I wanted to take my story and build them up. And it, here's the funny thing about the entire program. It was focused on the teenagers and it became more about the parents than the teenagers because these parents <laughs> needed even more than the teens. <laughs> yes, because it's hard. You have to go to the root when you're 
when I talk about dismantling limiting beliefs, you want to go to the root of where the belief came from. And so those youth, yes. as yes. you stated earlier in the, in the podcast, is that you had those formative years of programming. Well, yeah. if you have a young child and they have that programming and they keep going back to the source where they got the programming for, it's kind of, it's more difficult to help them break through out of the cycle. Mm-hmm. So now you go back to the source of where that came from, which is their parents, their first environment. And then you got to help those parents tap into their programming and change the yes, yes. whole script and get the formula embedded in the home environment at least. And then we're able to take on the outer environment. So my brother, it sounds like you went through the whole thing, but you as your book, and I really want to encourage our viewers to get that book from, from, is it, I don't want to mess it up from convict to cooperate. Corporate convict. Corporate convict where he's tough. It's on Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead and grab a copy of that. If you're listening to us, because if you are, whatever limitations you're creating for yourself, this will help you break through. Um, this book is going to give you more details that we can't go into on the podcast because of time. But here's yeah. what you heard. We heard from you that you had got stuck, you got yourself unstuck, and then you just went straight for it. How did you know what you were created for? How did you discover your purpose? What's I always the knew it. <laughs> I, here's the thing. I swear, I always knew, even when I didn't know. That was that's. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but I always knew there was something different about me. And growing up being biracial, I never identified with black or white. I would say I was brown. So I always had a different way of thinking. And even amongst the circles of my peers, I always moved up into leadership without trying. Mm-hmm. It wasn't because I was seeking leadership. No, they would catapult me to leadership because of how my mind thinks. As we talked about the law of attraction, the law of vibration, there's one that supersedes that. It's called the law of mind. Come on. Because as you think of, so, so is it. you are. Or so yes. is she. Yes. So that mind, it could be set to the wrong program come on you still got a mindset but it's right. it ain't set it's not right program. it's now, not set right Ooh. if you know a vehicle if you've ever driven a vehicle if the if it's not in alignment if it's not set correctly it's gonna ride bad yeah you still got the mindset but it's not set to the right time so what i'm yes. saying is you gotta be conscious of it and identify the fact what am i thinking about Right. And why am I thinking about that? And once you see that, you become conscious. Now you change that dial to get that focus. Remember back in the day when you had the TV, you had to move the antenna a little bit, get that right. little alignment up in there. And, and, right. and that's what you and I have is called alignment. Because yes. now we can see the picture clearer. And once you yes. get an alignment, here's what I tell you. You said something, I know I'm jumping, but you said something about the people around you in the circle. The circle. And, yes. and these knuckleheads that we have, we carry around us like, you know, this burden, this yoke on our neck that we carry around because we call it family and we call it friends. We use these F words all the time. And, and I'm going to say this. <laughs> these F words, you know, come with some baggage. And here's the thing. You don't even have to try to get rid of the people around you. Here's what I'm going to tell you all to do. This is a formula for me. Lead with your purpose. Every time they come with, can, did you see such and such fight is? Did you see what's going on on Club Shay Shay? Did you see what dumb Donald said about the... <laughs> I don't want to get political, but you know what I'm saying? When people come to you like that, you, you'll say, actually, I didn't hear about that because I stopped watching news and the TV, but hey, did you hear about what's the formula? Did you hear about the, the mindset and the and, and eventually they're going to say, they're going to be like, man, I don't even want to talk to this dude no more. Like, oh, hey, let me call you. Let me call you right back, bro. You know, I'm going to hit you up. And then they stop calling. So now they get rid of you because as the great Nipsey Hustle once said, if you have a circle and they're not building you up, you don't have a circle, you have a cage. And people will know you it. by what's around you. So Ooh. they'll run off just like spraying rain in the earth. When there's some Ooh. bugs around, spray that, spray some off. 
Ooh. And you and the, and the office, the words coming out of your mouth talking about success. Yes. Because the unsuccessful people, they don't want to hear nothing about no success. They want to keep talking about what's making them unsuccessful. And they're yes. eating the same thing. Like only a dog will go back and eat its own vomit. Mom and we is. act like dogs all the and time. And guess what? And that's a stray dog <laughs> keyword because the ones that are domesticated, right. they know better. They're like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But so much. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh Lord. Those F words. Listen. The F words. <laughs> everybody knows. I'm sure there's an episode on this stream that I talked about purpose and it's exactly what I say. And I love your response to it. I believe some people will always have this, oh, they, you know, I feel like a lot of people think you're gonna, the, the sky in your living room, if there's one in there, or some angel's gonna be by the foot of your bed and be like, thou virus Elisa, thy purpose is to be a global leader, a mindset disruptor in Mindset Mastery 360, and thou shall, no, 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 friend. Your purpose is the big why, and it's always been with you, is what bro was saying, which is what I always say. You just have to change the dial and tap into it. Just like he told us about the car formula, how much when you start to focus on it, it just multiplies everywhere. And life becomes, I say not easy, but simple when you're making Ooh. decisions from a purpose grounded mindset. All yes. he just said, because it doesn't, it's not, like people say, oh, Dr. White, are you dating? What do you care? Cause I don't care, I'm not dating. I might be and don't even know it because everything about my life and everything that concerns me, who I'm going to talk with, who I'm going to hang out with, who I'm going to do business with, where I'm going to go is in alignment with the big P. The P that we all like, Ooh. that my bro said. We all like that P, boy. That's the biggest P because it's such a sweet spot <laughs> when you walk in there, your purpose. Listen, it's the most, and I love to play with words a little bit like my brother do. It's orgasmic mm. when you are walking yes. in your purpose. Like you don't have money to pay the light bill. You, you your, your rent might be late. Your, your, no one wants to talk to you. You missing out on the Super Bowl game tonight nobody like they think you're born but you still in your orgasmic flow because you walking mm. in your purpose okay so listen yes. y'all better play this over and over again this is the mindset mastery moment my master class extended decision because when it comes to <laughs> me and my brother here we're not gonna stop till god tell us because if he said keep going we recording this you only gonna get bits and pieces on the podcast, so you're gonna have to hop over to the YouTube channel to get the full replay and watch our body language and watch our eyes and nose because that adds another flip. Because we are feeling if they want to call it Holy Ghost in here, boy, y'all saw me put my hands up when bro was speaking. I surrender all when he talked about all those F's. Like he dropped the F bomb in here that nobody really wants to talk about. That's the one limitation. He said, man. It is not your circle, it's your cage. Bro, mm, yes, what do you yes. mean a cage? You see, I don't know Nipsey Hussle that well, but I just felt like now I gotta go connect with the brother because Ooh, he's yeah. speaking my language. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you, some people would say, I have lost so many, so many relationships on my journey to purpose. I would tell you that my marriage, bro, that I was married before for 17 years. And when my ex-husband and I sat and had a conversation about us separating, even he was pointing me in my, in my, in my purpose. That man said to me, he said, everything about what we have created is holding you back from being the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's probably best for me to release you now. Some people will go over if I play the whole conversation. Some people will hear narcissism. Some people would hear a cop out. Hell yeah, he copped out because um, <laughs> queen right. over here be queening, okay? But I 
thought that was my end. I didn't start drinking or doing anything crazy, but I would tell you he's partially suicidal on a lot of days and sometimes wholly suicidal on a lot of days because it didn't make sense. I had had a miscarriage after going through IVF for so many years and then boom, fine. Now you figured out that I, my purpose is bigger. Like I've been purposing with you this whole time but not in the way in which I was supposed to. Yeah, so your purpose yeah. is always with you and people can't see it. Your friends and family can see, but a lot of times they want to lock you in the cage because they think that that purpose should be demonstrated within the confines of their opinions, their ideas, their sanctions, their support, their drive. And that's when you have to flee like a phoenix out of that cage that's right, that's right. and soar about the eagle. I've been like the eagle I've been talking about on my social media. The eagle can't fly with rocks and wings tied to rocks and stones tied to her wings. And a lot of times, as my brother emphasizes, is the F word. The friends and family we keep (laughs) are those stones. Let me tell you guys, I know I will. I remember I would cut somebody off in the office and they bring in too much mess to the. I would stop talking to. Um, I'll stop going to the nail salon if they're not doing right by my nails. The hairdresser, she'll get cut off. I'll be like, you know, um, my hair, when I came home, it didn't work out. I just want to let you know. And then she won't see me again. I'm a Libra. It's like, you try. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I don't want my money back. No, you keep that. But I'm not coming back, right? But the hardest time I have, bro, with redefining, I don't say cut people off. And I don't even say get rid of them. I had to redefine relationships along this journey of purpose Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with friends and family. And I've become, I would say, an assassin because I do it so quick. You don't even see it. And it's nothing to hurt anybody or discredit anybody. But once I realized these conversations is you you got one time, I'm like, what was that? And then the second, uh, oh, that's what that was. Okay, we out. We got to go. So here's what's going to happen. You about to only get 20 minutes of me once every three months. And if you don't know how, if you don't, if if the value that I bring to the conversation and the alignment is not there, then we probably won't talk till every other year because God, it's too, I'm already 43. What kind of time you think I got? I don't care how fit and how beautiful you look. When you hit 40, you want to sleep way more than you did when you were in your 20s and your 30s. <laughs> that means it's, really it started to look like 10 to 12 hours sleep. That feels like, yeah, now I can do something. But so, <laughs> yeah, you got to revamp those. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, guys, this is, this is, this is so powerful. And we're going to do, like... He's already carved out like four other episodes of a podcast with him and I and probably some other of our teammates from the from the movement. But here's the the, the the segment. Before we go back, I want you to wrap this out for us really quick. When it comes to walking in your purpose, and I'm saying, sorry, before we go to our next segment. When it comes to walking your purpose, what are some of the mindset shifts? If you got two of those that you can share with us that you've had to shift to say yes and fully embrace walking to your purpose, what would that look like for you? Number one, Number one read. read. Mm. <laughs> Knowledge like, is power. You have to start eating it. Eating it. Now, and I'm not talking about read World Star or Cosmo or no regular old junk that you used to read. Read success books. Read the Think and Grow Rich. Read the Corporate Convict. Um, read different books about people who have gone the route that you're going. And before I even get there, let me say this real quick because remember we talked about you can't hit a target that you don't see. And a lot of you all don't know what you look like being successful. So what I had to do was use this beautiful imagination that we all have. It's a superpower that we were told around the age of seven or eight to stop pretending, stop acting like you could fly, stop taking the sips of the fake tea party. We told, we, we tell our kids to stop doing that. I'm telling you to start doing it. Close your eyes in a meditative state and imagine yourself winning. Imagine yourself in your home, in your vehicle, in your business, and start painting this picture in your mind. I don't care if your bank account is in the negative, if you're filing for bankruptcy, if you owe the IRS, it doesn't matter what's going on today. Believe me and don't believe your lying eyes. 
as the great Richard Pryor once said, you going to believe me or you going to believe your lying eyes. Stop believing what's in your bank account. And I want you to believe what's in your mind. And imagine you winning in your purpose. Imagine you winning. Because what do what do we do when we're in sports? We do a countdown and we imagine ourselves hitting the last game winning shot or the last winning kick or whatever. We imagine this before it even happens. So stop waiting on something to happen and start using your imagination. Utilize that and imagine yourself doing the greatest things that you've ever done within your purpose. And once you start imagining this, then you focus on this and do it every single day. Make it a daily habit where five, 10 minutes, you just close your eyes, get into a closet if you need to or wherever, and just use your imagination to see yourself winning. The same way I did when I was in prison and I said, I'm going to be doing this. I saw that while I was in there and it came to fruition. And what I'm saying, if there's anything that you want, if you can't see it, it ain't going to happen. Well, that, that, that's number two, I guess. is Number one, read, get the books, get as many books, the podcast, the YouTube, clean up all your social media to get rid of all that trash you've been looking at. And start looking at the Les Browns, start looking at the Tony Robbins, start looking at the Dr. Elise, start looking at the coaches, because that's all you're going to see on my timeline. And and that way, every time you go on there and start scrolling, you're seeing successful quotes, successful this business, this and business that. Change your daily habits, you all. But put whatever you're putting in and stop watching the news. Come That's on, the worst man. worst thing you can do That's is watch a- the news because it ain't nothing but bad on there. <laughs> yes, negative things. But that imagination. <laughs> yes, yes. He's talking, and we did. I think I think we have that episode up to where I talked about visualization. If I didn't, it's coming at yes. some point. Yes. But he's talking about visualizing. He said when he was in prison, he had a vision. And for those who have read the good book and they might, there's a version of it in the, in the Quran and in the Bhagavad Gita, because those are three major books, the three major religion. And I believe I'm pretty sure because I hang around Baha'is before it's in there. And all these thought leaders around the world, like, like my brother Ernest and I talk about it, but in the good book, the Bible that I grew up reading, my spiritual guide to begin with, when I started off my journey talked about faith is a substance of all things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and so some christians talk about they they get offended by the words manifestation and visualization i'm like y'all y'all just be playing yourselves because what do y'all think the bible been telling us when jesus went away for 40 days and 40 nights what do y'all think he was doing he was visualizing He was meditating. They don't want to hear about meditating. He was meditating. And when the faith, the, 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 the faith is a substance of all things. So sorry for the evidence of things that seen. How is you going to get evidence? Because this, this beautiful being that you are, you are created with the magnificence of the God. This is why my brother and I are referring to ourselves as little G O D's. I'm a goddess. He's a God. Why we are deities because we can sit here and literally visualize something in our mind and we would have created it. Boom. And we get up tomorrow, we do the same thing, and then boom. I remember being an international best-selling author, had the signature picked out seven years before it became. But when I when I wrote the book, when I wrote the book, they said, Can you send your um your autograph? So yeah, you can get a liquid you know wet signature but it's already autographed and it was the one from seven years that i signed on my phone and i screenshot it and put it there international best-selling author i've never been a best-selling author i went straight to international best-selling author because that's what i visualized uh, but then i realized that even better than an international best-selling author is a new york's time bestseller even better than a tedx stage is a ted stage because that's where the millions and billions of views are and it's mm-hmm. like I remember being told I need to do a podcast and I put it off, put it off, finally I did and the podcast shot, shot up. So do y'all understand visualization that you are actually creating and putting things Super the power. way you want it to be? 
Do you understand that I manifested having brothers like Ernest in my life, Dr. Kareem and Charlotte and all these wonderful people? I envisioned and had a clear written vision that I visualized having people like that that I get to work with every day. I actually built a company called Fulfillment Empowerment Network that has nothing to do with what you think a traditional corporate company is. It was always just a network of professionals who came together to administer transformation in people's personal and professional life. And who do you think I have with me on the team from all across the globe in Mindset Mastery 360? And I made that up when I was going through divorce and wanted to kill myself. I was like, do we go to ceiling? Do we sit on the train track? What are, how are we gonna do this? Cause this is not the math and math in God. Like I made, I, <laughs> I waited till I got married. To, to you know do the do I waited till I got married to have kids and you did not let me have kids then you try to took me down the journey of almost having them took them away then the man decides okay your purpose is bigger than what I could do like explain this I was like I'm ready to go like you need to figure out a way how you gonna get me out of here I'm gonna do it myself but then in those dark moments I was still writing the purpose that God gave me with clarity. And then I started to create habits. Let me tell you guys, I didn't have money for therapy. It was podcasts that saved me. Yes. yes. I don't know mm. that I was a YouTube listening person back then, but it came like a year or two later with YouTube, but it's Apple. I had an Apple iPhone and I started going and podcast. And then yes, yeah, someone sent me a YouTube video by incident about putting one foot in front of the other. Okay. And so I start listening to people. I wasn't a big social media person, but I would tweet, I say, from my pain, what I was learning, when my mind would shift, I started writing and I encouraged somebody else. And I remember as I moved through my work and get deeper in my purpose, I had people saying, we miss when you just post those two lines. And that was when I was in the pain. And I noticed when I just tweet, people will gravitate to the little words versus when I put it in a nice frame and make a quote. But I've got thousands of them and people like, I'm not sure. I don't throw shade at nobody. Nothing you didn't see. I didn't put up there. It's not a lesson I didn't learn. And I'm hoping just one person connects with it. But what I'm trying to tell you is what you feed will grow and that your mind yes, is yes. the most powerful tool you would have. And my brother said it so mm -hmm. eloquently. He went into some scientific truth when he talked about how many people are sick and dying and actually died because of mental induced illnesses what did you call that bro yes, yes. emotionally e -I -I. E -I -I. Induced, illness. induced illnesses because the hurt and the pain from your past mm -hmm. is still very much present in your present i mean look at the word emotion it's energy in motion your energy is that powerful that you can make yourself sick yes and you, you can, can literally make, make yourself, yourself sick, sick. Right. I have he literally, is, <laughs> I have literally, you don't even want to know the amount of things the doctors labeled me with. Like, I wish I knew to the depth that I did, but I understood that God wanted me to give birth to possibilities for young people and for children and even for adults all over the world. And that's probably why he withheld in this lifetime, me giving birth naturally. But Mother I also nations. wonder... But I wonder if, if I had understood the power of my mindset and how I can heal, if back then I would have, I don't know. But what I do know is that I know now. And when they give me a diagnosis, I'm like, uh-uh-uh, no, sir, no, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming out to make me be, help me be in the awareness of where my body is bleeding. But here's where we're going to go. We're going to go to the power of That's enlightening right. my right. mind about this disease and looking for the natural ways. And I'm not telling you that I walk out of the doctor's office and go drink a bunch of herbs and things I never heard about. I am telling you that I have unlocked the power of my mind to literally, when they give mm. me a condition diagnosis, my brother, and they said, oh, you have Hashimoto's disease. I know people in my circles and family members who struggle with the same disease, but they don't, they don't do, they're locked up. They just go to work and come home. They're always on our energy conservation. And yes, I have to regulate my sleep and all this stuff. But guys, it never stopped me. It never stopped me. And as I unlock the power of healing from my mind and understanding that my body has the power to renew itself, but it starts Ooh. in my mind. You yes, have to yes. see me. I'm dropping pounds 
and I am more energized than I've ever been with all what the doctors tell me. I got the prescriptions that they give me just put in a corner and finally did my That's research right. till I find a doctor who said these prescriptions, you don't need to take it. What you need to do is fast. And because my social media feed is lined up, what my brother said with the right information, with the right accounts I'm following, guess what keeps coming at me? Fast, 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 fast. I keep studying, learning, and then now I'm going to pull out archives and textbooks and research. And guess what, bro? Before we, oh my gosh, we're deep here. I just realized that I've been fasting when I was a young girl, before I used to sing more than I spoke. And I would travel at least every other Saturday. We had concerts that I would do. I would be featured and it would be me and the band and my, my sibling. I, my sister would sing and my cousin, we had our own band. We had three different bands because it was me and then it was the two of us and it was the three of us. But I realized that that is Saturday. I did not eat. And the reason why I didn't eat is because I wanted my, not only vocally, but also good spiritually that would be a pure sound that come from my voice to minister to the people I was singing in front of. And my body just yes. naturally knew not yes. to eat. No one taught me about fasting. I wasn't even trying to fast. I just didn't eat because I knew what food was going to do to me when I tried to bring the message. But now in my 40s, oh, I'm understanding yeah. the power of fasting. And it's all in my mind. It's like the doctors, uh, one doctor said just yesterday, one of my research said, Hunger is an emotion. It's a sensation. It is. Don't, yes. my yes. brother said, think about what you think about. <laughs> so if I feel hungry and I think, <laughs> no, I am going to eat in the next eight hours. I won't eat till tomorrow. My body will be, oh, that's what you want me to do? Okay, then I'm not hungry. Right, right. If you tell your no, body, I'm no, going to no, drive no. A, 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 a purple Lamborghini, you will see a bunch of purple Lamborghinis either on your timeline or on the street. You might luckily see one on the street. That tells you the Lamborghini just got closer. Whatever that mm -hmm. means for you. Absolutely. I got up this morning, my visualization, bro. And I'm going to ask you to share yours before we go to commercial. My visualization, because God told me I need to build a $2 billion network. That's what Mindset Master 360 is. Okay. $2 billion. 1 million people by 2028. So I am to visualize exactly what that looks like. So in the visualization, bro, we got a jet. We got a couple private jets because you and I got to go from the USA to from Africa. From the PJs to a PJ. <laughs> yeah, we just we we can't be in airlines trying to get to four different countries in one week. We can't stand in line with. I'm people. spiritual, but I don't like the ride spirit. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's gonna take all year for us to get there. So people might say, right. "I'm not trying to flash." I trust me. I am good. I tell people my budget. I don't need. I don't need. $250,000 to maintain a lifestyle for this little simple lady. I don't, but I need $2 billion to manifest and bring forward all the messages and people that God has allowed me to align myself with. We need $2 billion. Mm. Okay. So yes. if that's going to be a visualization, let, let's tip you. It's going to have to have details. We need the jet, how many seats it has, how many right. okay who, who how many people are going what are we doing i can i'm sitting there in my visualization i can see it we're gonna need people to cook for us because we got to maintain our health we're gonna need a driver we're gonna need drivers on all different all 195 mm -hmm. sets of the con we're gonna need buildings we're gonna need our own hotel listen all the details are in there because i have visualized and only visualized this part and then realize when i get them like yeah i should have put that in there so now i'm just putting through the detail what does it feel like who am i traveling it and when you see their posters you see ernest moss and you see charlotte you see dr kareem Ellis, you see dev holt on the screen there's people are seeing a poster and a flyer no i'm seeing the assembly of the team Ooh. Ooh. yes yes What's that old African uh, proverb that says, uh, go by yourself, you can go fast. Go as a group, you can go long. Something That's like what that. Mindset Mastery 360 is built on. <laughs> because if, if you're going to if you're going to do a $2 billion network, it's, it's not for you, friend. I'm sorry to tell anybody 
God is not going to give you $2 billion when you only need 200000 So the minute you step out and start yeah. building that network and that mission, yes. he will yes. start to provide and he'll go, okay, here's 200000 Okay, because you're at that 200000 level level. You're working. Okay, here's $2 million because you're working at the $2 million yeah. level. Yeah. Here's the $2 billion because now you're here. He's not going to throw it all of you because he knows you're going to act the fool and mess up. So what does your visualization yeah. look yeah. like, bro? Tell us that and we'll go to commercial. It's beautiful that you framed it. You just pre-framed my whole visualization because you're getting us on these PJs because I say PJs meaning projects private jet. to a private jet. <laughs> I will write that book too. PJs to the PJ. To the private jet. Yes, because it's coming. Right. And by the way, I have been on a private jet, everyone. So I checked that off my list. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. Um, yes. But these PJs are taking us to is the private island that has the compound where we actually pour into people and we have seminars and different breakout sessions similar to Tony Robbins, but on a whole nother level because we need our own land. And then we're going to have staff quarters where we're hiring people and bringing the local people on this island because the only way you're going to get here is through a helicopter or a boat because we're not connected to the land. But that PJ take you to the airport where we have that private driver that will drive you to where the helicopter or the boat is there to pick everyone up and bring them to this compound that we have on an island that we own through the business and we have full staff right there and all accommodations checked off and everyone that comes to our events are going to be like wow this is wrong you know we also coming to america type stuff you know <laughs> listen listen and that's what i see <laughs> oh my goodness and we don't have nothing more to tell you in this episode i'm about to pop up the qr code QR code is to simply become a global mindset ambassador. Join the movement now. You join this movement, you have all of us assembled there and you connect with us on the different other movements we have, but we're moving together because alone we can go fast, together we just go further. And we are people that yes, want more. Yes. We're people of value that add value to people and we want more. You don't have to pay to join the movement, guys. Go ahead, scan the QR code and explore it. We'll be right back after we're from our sponsors. We are back in the studio with my brother, my friend, the uncomfortable, Mr. Ernest Moss, senior, <laughs> senior, big coach, E, WTF, what's the formula? And he has been in this, I am calling this episode another masterclass because he's given us the formula to success as a person in your life, in your career, and also in your business. This is what the podcast is about. So here's the, we're on our final ep, our final segment of this episode. And the question I have for you, Coach E, is what do you define success to be? With all the success oh, you've had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Su success to me is ever evolving. Because what you see as success today, even let's take it back five years ago, what you thought of success is not what you think of success today. But in the at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, true success is someone that's happy, joyful, blissful. Because here's the thing: once you get in line, as the Cat Williams would say, with your star player. Once you get into alignment here with your star player, everything around you becomes more successful. But it all starts with this right here. So success to me is you being happy, being fulfilled, being in your purpose. It's not about a dollar sign. It's not about any of those tangible things. It's about are you blissful? Are you joyful? Are you healthy? Are you happy? And if you check those boxes, then sweetheart, young man, you are very successful. I don't care what your bank account says. I don't care how many times you've been divorced, how many times you took an L that you thought was a loss that truly was a lesson, still an L, but it's just how you look at it. But you are very successful and you're out here helping people. So I salute everyone, all of my successful people out there because there's not one blueprint to success. 
because success is different for everybody. But I ask you, if what you're doing is bringing about joy and bliss into your life, then you're very successful. And to me, that's what successful is. is being happy Ooh. in your own skin. Your own skin. Yes, being happy in your own skin. I love it. Very similar. The next question I have for you, Coach, is what's your formula? If you had to give us a quick, what is your particular formula to success? So my, so my yes, yes. My, my formula is this. Impact the lives of everybody I come in contact with. Everybody that hears the sound of my voice. 